Hi, this is Game Development with Pygame, and in this video we're going to wrap up our shmup game by adding a game over screen uh, and giving us the ability to play again. In this video we're going to add a simple uh, game over or title screen to our game so that uh, when you start it up you know, it doesn't start immediately like this, immediately start playing. And then also so that when we die, uh, and here I'll show you what happens so that you can be clear what I'm talking about. One more life left. Okay, and the game just exits, right? We'd like to be able to say game over, press the key to play again, something like that. So that's what we're going to do this time around. So if we go down here, we have our game loop, right? This while running, as long as running is true, the game loop runs. And when our lives run out, we set running to false and the game is over. So what we can do is basically we want the game to have two states. Either while this game loop is running, it's either showing the game over screen or it's playing the game, one or the other. Okay, so what I'm going to do is make another variable for that called game over, and that's going to determine whether we should show the game over screen or not. Okay, and in this while running loop, I'm just going to say if game over. So what should we do if the game is over? Well, we should show the game over screen. And it should sit there and wait for the player to press a key uh, to start the game. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say show game over screen. And we'll define that in a second. And that's going to do the, the, the waiting, right? So when they do press a key and the game over screen ends and we come back to right here, we're going to say the game, game over is false. So that way we won't be showing it the next time through the loop. But we have one other problem, and that is that when the game ends, say I'm playing the game and I run out of lives, so my score is something and my lives are zero. Well, if I go to the game over screen, that's fine, but if I press to start again and I just switch game over to false, then it's going to try to run the loop, but my lives are still going to be zero. And my score is still going to be whatever it was. I have to reset everything. And that's basically all of this stuff from here to there. So setting up the empty groups for, for all our different types of sprites, spawning the player, and spawning the, the starting mobs, and setting the score to zero are all the things that we do when we start a new game. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut that, and I'm going to paste it right here. So when we come back from the game over screen, we're going to do all of these things that, that start a new game. Okay, and then down here, when we die, when our lives run out, right? When our lives run out, we want to set game over to true now, because the game is over. But not running equals false, because that would make the whole program end. Okay, so that's really all we need to make this happen, except now that we need to define what show game over screen does. Well, the show game over screen is just going to have some, some text on it and things. So I'm going to define that. I'll go up here to where I have my other uh, definitions. And we'll go show game over screen. OK, so what are we going to do on this screen? Well, we're going to draw some text. So let's draw onto the screen. The text we want to draw is we'll draw the title of our, of our game. Oops. And I think I'll make it a large font size so it stands out. And I'm going to put that at width over 2 so it's uh, centered on the screen horizontally. And I'm going to put it at height over 4 so it's up here at the kind of the top quarter of the screen. Okay, then I'm also going to put here um, some, some instructions, right? Because when you start up a game, um, you want to know what the controls are. 
right? So we'll tell them, that, tell the player what they need to do. We can make this a little smaller, and we're going to put this at width over two as well, but we're going to put the height over two. So it's going to be at the center of the screen. And here, let me do that so you can see uh, the whole line without getting too long. And then the last thing that I want to put on the screen is I want to say, press a key to begin. And that we can make a little smaller even. Still centered, uh, but this is going to be at height times uh, three, three quarters, right? So that way it's towards the bottom of the screen. We'll flip the screen so that they can see it. And now we need to just wait for them to press a key, which means we want to do start an infinite loop, or I should say a while loop, which continues until they press a key. So let's set waiting equals true and say while waiting. So as long as they're waiting, um, we're going to go ahead and, uh, and use our We'll just use our FPS clock to to um, control the speed of this loop. And then we're just going to check what events have happened. OK, and the, the events we want to check for, there's actually two. Yes, we want to wait for the player to press a key. But we don't want to ignore the clicking the X up in the corner of the window, right? But otherwise, the player is trapped uh, playing this game, right, down in our original loop we check for the quit event to let you quit out of the game. Uh, we also want to check for the quit event in our on our game over screen. So if event dot uh, type is pygame.quit, then we want to actually just quit the whole program. We don't want to just end the loop and go back into our game. Okay, And now we want the key. So now there's a little trick here too. Now I could do key down like this to say, yeah, they pressed a key. But here's the problem with that. Let's say that it, I can press any key, right? So if, let's say that the key that I pressed down was one of the arrow keys or the space key. Then I'm going to push it down. This loop is going to end and the game is going to start. But that's going to happen pretty quickly. And I probably still have the key down. So basically, my game has started, and my key is down. So if this was a space bar, I'd already be shooting. And what we really like to do is let the player start the controls when they're ready to do it. So if we do it on a key up event, then when it says press any key to continue, and you tap the key, uh, we start the game, or we end the game over screen, I should say, by the key going up, not the key going down. Okay. So we'll say waiting equals false. OK, so let's see how that looks. So when we start our game, there's our title screen. OK, we press a key and it begins. OK, now I'm going to die here so we can make sure that it goes back to the new game properly and resets everything. OK. All right, game over. Now, um, Notice that I didn't wipe the screen when we when we died, and now we have the shmup uh, title screen and everything on top of the, the background. And if we hit start, it'll clear again. Now that is, we have an option. We could do a couple of things. One is we could um, go down here and we could fill the screen with black, but it might look nice if we were to just um, in our game over screen, we were just to blit that uh, background image on there so that when we first start, we have the nice uh, starry background. And then when we also when we die, uh, we'll see that as well. It's always a little hard, hard to die when you want to. Okay, there we go. Now see it drew the background and then the words so that it erases whatever sprites were left around there. 
Okay. So that's our game over screen. So this is a pretty simple implementation of the game over screen. Uh, but it's good enough for our purposes right now. So at this point, our shmup game is pretty much complete. Um, it has all the pieces, all the basic pieces it needs uh, to do everything we wanted it to do from the beginning. Um, if we look, we're at about 373 lines of code. Not too bad for all the functionality we have. Um, there's lots more you could add. Uh, we haven't made the game very hard yet. Um, you could speed up the, the meteors or add more of them. Um, you can slow the, the ship down or make the bullet smaller. Um, you could add some different kinds of power-ups uh, that, do, that do different things. Um, you could add additional kinds of enemies. Um, we can have we could have a high score system where you keep track of uh, the highest score that uh, people have achieved and and see whether you beat it or not. Um, you could have a, a you know a boss fight so that after a certain amount of time all the meteors disappear and another new type of of sprite that's a big giant you know alien spaceship shows up and shoots back at you. Um, you could go pretty far with this, and I'll leave that to you um, if you want to add. You know, try and add some of that stuff. Um, I'm going to call this game complete for now, at least for the purposes of our t of our tutorial here, um, because what I'd like to do with the next set of videos is start making a different kind of game, um, and then also cover some different techniques that we haven't covered yet in this one that you can always go back and apply to them. One of them being to uh, to clean up our code and make it a little more organized and uh, you know break it up into parts so we don't have to scroll through all this uh, graphics loading stuff and, and and things like that and we'll we'll cover those and you can always come back and once you see how they work add them back into your shmup game as well all right thanks for watching